one of the great things I'm finding out about our genealogy uh, search and road trips is that I'm getting to see lots of different places in Ireland, some of which I knew before, some of which I didn't particularly know before. In today's case, it's very special to me because we're sitting here in Waterford City, literally 100 meters from where my mom my granny and my granddad grew up before they moved to Dublin, so it's a real thrill to be here. Waterford has a rich and fascinating history dating back over a thousand years. In 914 AD, having arrived and been ousted in the 700s, Waterford was actually founded by the Vikings, making it Ireland's oldest city. Moving on to the latter part of the 19th century, bacon was Waterford's most thriving industry. Pig buyers, according to the Irish Times, were mainly viewed as the political and economic heartbeat of the city. Ballybricken was the main location for five large factories, and in the words of one historian, it was the Montmartre of the abattoir world. You may wonder why such a beautiful building as Montmartre was used in this context. But a little research showed that the Montmartre area in Paris was slaughtering 23,000 sheep and 5,000 oxen per day at its peak. And it was nicknamed the City of Blood. By 1900, the Waterford pig market supplied over half of London's pork and cured bacon. Waterford producer Denny's exported across the world, even supplying the US Army in the Second World War. But in the 1890s, the industry came under pressure and here is where we get the story of one man in the thick of it. We have decided to investigate a little bit more one of your Waterford ancestors, a very interesting character called Joseph Walsh. Um, I think you like this guy. You did a lot of uh, study on what was written about him. And uh, so, so tell us what you found out and what you thought. We certainly found from your research, Rose, uh, very interesting, uh, famous or infamous ancestor, depending on your viewpoint. His name was Joseph Walsh. He came from humble beginnings, but managed to build up a business as quite a large pig buyer. However, as time went on, the bacon factories found that there was price pressure on their product from suppliers in mainland Europe. And one of the cost cutting uh, exercises that they took on board was to replace the intermediaries as they saw out the pig buyers with their own procurement people. This was met with fierce resistance by the pig buyer community and a pillar of that pig buying community was my great great grandfather Joseph. So he was instrumental along with some others in organizing boycotts and pickets and also disrupting the boats bringing in the pigs from the farming community and they would land here on the quays in County Waterford. There was utter chaos at the quays with the arrival of pigs on the river boats. Farmers were trying to bring the pigs directly to the cellars or slaughterhouses and the buyers were trying to intercept and buy them. The unfortunate animals, already facing slaughter, had their last hours made even more wretched, as according to newspaper reports, they were severely injured in the toss-up and would have gone to market as damaged bacon. At the peak of the dispute, on the 16th of December 1896, here's what happened to Joseph. Joseph and his friends retired for some refreshment. So emboldened post-refreshment, they came out and there were a couple more scuffles and skirmishes, uh, one of which led to his being arrested. Now, the local police, I'm sure, thought this was a very easy arrest for drunk and disorderly of a 74-year-old man uh, with a walking stick. 
uh, but they didn't bargain for Joseph. And it was noted in court that he was kicking and punching and gouging all of them on the way. He also managed to inflict a, a serious wallop between the legs to one of the policemen with the aforesaid walking stick. In taking a look at the broader picture, John Redmond, chairman of the Irish Parliamentary Party and sponsor of the Third Home Rule Bill, was also a local MP for Waterford. He fully supported the pig buyers and successfully defended many of them in court. While the rest of the country had turned away from Redmond's party at election time, Waterford remained staunchly loyal. The pig buyers never forgot his support and at his funeral in 1916, acted as pallbearers. So, uh, what do I think of my uh, infamous uh, ancestor? Without a doubt, uh, he had a brush with the law and indeed it wasn't the first or last of those he would have. But I have to say, he proved to be quite a feisty lad. And uh, you know, I think, according to the court report, he probably would have given Rocky a pretty good run for his money. <laughs> um, so what do I think of him? Uh, in the end, uh, I have to say, I like him. <laughs>